a theory of everything. Physicists have long sought the discovery of a theory of everything, an all-encompassing framework which unites the known laws of the universe into a single theorem, enabling us to understand every physical phenomenon in the universe. But today we're talking about the search for a different theory of everything, one which would unite not the sciences, but the collective minds of humanity, the natural and social worlds, our cultures and responses to them, a philosophical theory of everything. Number three, the concept. It's claimed that a philosophical theory of everything would help us understand ourselves and our race to a greater extent than ever before. Conflict, resolution, creativity, desire. The causes and effects of such things would be permanently exposed, allowing humanity to move beyond our instinctive responses to create a more thoughtful society. There is a huge question mark over whether such a theory could possibly exist, though, considering the subjective nature of most human experiences. Nevertheless, psychologist Ken Wilber attempted it anyway, with his idea of integral theory. This framework attempts to pull together all human knowledge and experience and place it into a four-quadrant grid. It begins with our consciousness, which Wilbur describes as our sense of I. Then there is our external self, it, which is our brain and physical body. Next up is a collective identity, we, formed of our culture and worldviews. Finally, we have the collective exterior, its which involves our civilization's social systems and environment. Wilbur looked at how humans grow in each of these ways and formed lines of development branching off towards a common path of progression, with both personal and collective human development categorized by the acquisition of certain traits. So, what are these traits? And how high is humanity on this scale? Number two, the self. When humans are born, we're selfish. We are simple-minded, we are basic in every sense of the word. As we get older, our psychological sense of ourselves and our place in the world increases due to our interactions, and we gradually become less narcissistic. Some people never develop in this way and remain selfishly egocentric their entire lives, whereas others try to push the boundaries of selflessness in an attempt to see themselves as part of a bigger picture, the world. This is why I hate babies. They never think about me and my needs. Ken Wilber categorizes these stages in his book, A Theory of Everything, an integral vision for business, politics, science, and spirituality. His model begins with archaic and instinctual behaviors which promote an individualistic identity before progressing towards conformist identities which hold that humans should be part of a group to succeed. These terms can be used to describe the progression of individual humans as well as that of the race itself with cavemen slash babies having learned to cooperate and eventually transforming into decent members of society. Rationality then trumps this stage by offering a more conscientious look at the self, with one's actions determined by their inner sense of what is right and wrong, which itself is based on the culture in which you live. Next up is humanity's current quagmire, pluralistic relativism. This idea contends that there is no singular form of right and wrong, and that there are a range of moralities which we all choose to buy into. Wilbur criticizes this postmodern way of thinking as ethnocentric, since your values are based on the culture and these are subject to clashes. Instead, he asserts we should all seek to adopt a world-centric approach, one which would take humans towards transpersonal worldviews. Wilbur feels this would promote a quantum jump in human consciousness, taking our race towards a stage of next-level thinking. This does not involve criticizing or mocking the previous stages. Instead, a transpersonal worldview appreciates less developed mindsets as necessary parts of the human existence, allowing us to interact with people of that ilk without looking down on them. To spend too much time in one mindset permanently alters a person, but too little means you'll fail to understand those who are still within that frame of mind. An experience of each state is vital to understand what it is to be human, according to Mr. Wilbur. Wilbur's work undoubtedly contains more jargon than a think piece by an intersectional vegan feminist, but his conclusion bears thinking about. 
It is important that certain instincts are repressed for society to function, which is why we can't go out murdering and groping anything we see just to appease our base desires. But we mustn't repress all instincts, and nor must we always denigrate those who fail where we have succeeded. The world is made of many people and many nations, each of whom is at their own stage of understanding themselves and their environment. If this act of exploitation was collective rather than individual, perhaps this is how we could achieve a true theory of everything. If all of our goals are focused on making each other better humans, perhaps everything else will fall into place. Or we'll devolve into a hive mind and become a race of mindless drones. Who knows? Number one, our culture. Until now, most attempts to explain human behaviors and the composition of the mind have relied on evolutionary principles. For example, if a guy is wearing Crocs and cargo shorts, it's because his genes are inferior and he must be marked out as such to prevent breeding. Everything is based on the Darwinian concept of the survival of the fittest. However, our old pal Wilbur applies the same rules to the sense of self as he does to the other three quadrants in his grid, and this shakes things up a little. In terms of our physical selves and our behavior, the it, Wilbur describes organisms as progressing from atoms and molecules through different evolutionary stages, all the way to creatures with a complex neocortex like ourselves. He asserts once more that we are not at the end of our development in this regard, although he offers no idea as to where we'll end up next. My conclusion, pervy space ghosts. Wilbur's third quadrant refers to our culture and worldviews and is so stacked with made-up words as to almost render itself entirely irrelevant. It kicks off with culture being based on physical activities before progressing exponentially towards culture which integrates the mind and body and elevates consciousness. The fourth and final quadrant describes our society's social systems, building in complexity from galaxies and planets towards ecosystems, families, tribes, and nation-states. The end goal here is a planetary society, one without borders or flags or disgusting national delicacies that nobody really likes. Integral theory's basic premise is that progression in one of these areas can be helped, or is sometimes dependent on, the other three areas of the human experience. Proponents of Wilbur's work have cited the approach by modern medicine as an example of integral theory in action. Whereas previously medical procedures treated the physical body, the it, progress in mental health has also now taught us to seek solutions in the I, the sense of self, as well as exploring possible problems which stem from a person's interactions with society and culture. The same framework can be used to find solutions in commerce by exploring what people want who they identify as, and to which social group they belong. And further answers can be found across the arts, politics, and even the sciences by considering each of our four integral quadrants. Perhaps the idea that this is a theory of everything makes us assume something contrary to what it actually provides. This is not an equation which allows us to predict the future, nor is it an answer to every problem ever. What integral theory does provide us with is context for our problems and it shows us where we might progress to in the future if we, all humans, are able to consider the bigger picture. Interestingly, it seems Wilbur's work has come as a reaction to the idea of postmodernism, which he believes is outdated and needs to die. This is something we're going to expand on in our bonus video, The Death of Postmodernism, which you can watch on our Patreon page at patreon.com slash strange mysteries. For a $2 a month pledge, which you can cancel at any time, you'll get to watch this and all of our bonus content, which goes deeper and darker into every topic than YouTube allows. If you don't want to donate, then that's full We know you wanted more. Strange mysteries on YouTube and our Patreon bonus videos weren't enough to quench your search for truth, to give you that sense of awe and wonder again, to go past what you thought was the end, to give you the answers you seek but which only lead to more questions. That's why we just up the stakes. Chemicals of reality. Reality, consciousness, brains. What else is there? Ask yourself that question. Perhaps that's all there really is, but perhaps everything else is found within a place where these ideas, these things, overlap. Some thing, some place that is undefinable. To many people, altering certain chemicals in their brains produces what they would simply call hallucinations. 
In fact, what we're going to discuss specifically used to be called the businessman's trip, as one could enjoy it. Come down and put your pants back on in the time it takes to eat lunch. It wasn't taken seriously. Well, unless, of course, you started digging. And some people, including us, did. Already, though, to many people, this chemical is special amongst others. Very special. To them, it represents something more meaningful and incredible, as if it's the gateway to the next level of consciousness. The ticket to a higher reality barely explored by most humans. It is the entry point to a new reality visited by only a select few whose minds have become enlightened through the use of this exotic substance. For this reason, it's commonly referred to as the spirit molecule. But is its reputation as a mystical mind-opener deserved? Or is it and everything it represents just a load of bullshit? We look at, investigate, and dive deeply into nearly all available research regarding this question from nearly every angle feasible. And in the course of doing so, stumble upon unexplainable patterns, correlations, and neurological evidence for a reality existing beyond this one. Watch this hour-long Strange Mysteries premium video, Chemicals of Reality, as well as many more to come by becoming an elite premium member of our Patreon at patreon.com slash strange mysteries.